underestimate my power! No, you overestimate it. Drastically. I just wanna be the one you love. I just wanna be the one you love. So, the summer box office is in a slump, guys. And there are many articles out there touching on this, but we're gonna take a look at a Breitbart article today, uh, kind of break down a little bit what's going on with the summer box office. And then I'll, I'll give you what I think is the deal uh, here towards, towards the end of the article, but let's go ahead and get right into this. So, uh, box office slump continues as Toy Story 4 underperforms. And now, that no one is calling this, uh, this movie a, a flop, okay? No one is saying that Toy Story 4 did fine but it really did miss the mark here. Toy Story 4 is a hit, a big hit at the box office with the second best opening for an animated film, but it still missed the mark. The low end projection was for 140 million opening, low end projection. Uh, box Office Mojo expected 165 million, but there was a ton of talk about a potential 170 to 200 million, or at least a smidge over the current animated record holder. The Incredibles 2, which opened to 183 million at around the same time last year. Instead, Toy Story 4 is projected to open to 136 million, nothing to sneeze at, and word of mouth could add a few million before Monday morning. Now, this was uh, last week that this article came out. But that's not the shot in the arm the box office needed or anticipated. As of Thursday, the 2019 box office is at 8.8% behind 2018. 2.6% behind 2017, and 1% behind 2016, less than one half of 1% ahead of 2015. A string of outright flops and unexpected disappointments, Men in Black, International, uh, Dark Phoenix, Rocket Man, Shazam, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, uh, The Lego Movie Part 2, Shaft, Late Night, Secret Life of Pets 2, Booksmart, The Hustle, Long Shot, Hellboy have so far tanked the summer, so far. And year in ways no one expected. The bright spots have been few and far between. Toy Story 4 is a bright spot, just not the supernova everyone counted on. As far as how this weekend will perform compared to the same weekend last, uh, last year, Toy Story 4 fell short of the 148 million Jurassic World 2 opened with over the weekend of June 22nd, 2018. Backing up Jurassic World 2 was another big hit. Uh, the Incredibles 2, which earned $80 million in its second weekend to deliver an overall weekend that cleared $271 million. All Toy Story 4 has to back it up are a bunch of flops, so we can expect this year's box office to fall even further behind last year. And no, inf no reinforcements will arrive for another two weeks, at least until Spider-Man Far From Home arrives to take on the 4th of July. Also underperforming this weekend is the Child's Play remake no one asked for. Expectations for a 17 million debut fell short of with an actual 15 million. Men in Black International, which opened to a disastrous 27 million, collapsed 60% in its second weekend. After 10 days, the spinoff sits at a pathetic 54 million. So why wasn't Toy Story 4 the phenomenal everyone expected? Well, to begin, I think it was unfair to place such a big burden of the forequel. The Incredibles is an entirely, uh, I'm sorry, The Incredibles is an entirely different franchise, an action series with the side of order of family drama. Toy Story is a children's franchise, which kids and adults like myself love, but it is not going to attract the teenage crowd in the same way as The Incredibles. The fact that Toy Story is in its fourth chapter and overperforming its predecessors is pretty amazing. Unfortunately, all this wish casting about breaking the 180 to 200 million mark dimmed an otherwise stellar debut. The Incredibles 2 went on to gross an incredible 608 million domestic. Toy Story 4 won't come close to that won't come close to that and may not even top the 114 150, 415 million Toy Story 3 earned in 2010. But it is a big hit. It is a wonderful movie that deserves to be a hit and should be judged on its own merits without the burden of the whole box office year on its shoulders. Here's the thing though. Even if Toy Story 4 had opened with 500 million, with 1 billion, with 50 billion, it would not have done the overall movie industry a whole hell of a lot of good because of what we have uh, here is yet another Disney hit. Disney has Disney. 
has Marvel, has Pixar, has Star Wars, and now has everything 20th Century Fox. Disney has gobbled up more than a third of the box office pie this year and has earned more money than its closest two competitors combined and still has The Lion King, July 19th, Maleficent 2, October 18th, Frozen 2, November 22nd, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, I'm sorry, I got a little sick there, uh, December 20th, warming up in the bullpen, along with a piece of, spider of Sony's Spider-Man, Far From Home, July 2nd. If 2019 pulls out of this dive, it'll be if it'll be Disney's doing alone. The rest of the film industry will be will still be licking its wounds, especially after the death of so many Golden Goose franchises, deaths that will have long-lasting repercussions for years to come. So, after taking a look at this, here's here's my breakdown for this for you guys. Personally, I feel like we've hit a point with Disney where it's basically just eating itself, right? Um, and and you can you can take this whatever way you wish. Oh, Disney's still on top because they're they're beating out all the competitors, right? Yes, true for the moment. But right now, what we're looking at is a scenario where Disney is leaving no competition available or around for us, and we're getting a little sick of it because Disney really only offers that sort of family-friendly genre. Uh, they, they sort of nerf everything. They, they stick a, a foam of bubble wrap around everything for us to try to consume. And I think it's going to get to a point where Disney is going to basically just eat itself. I don't think we're going to to continue supporting as not just not just the here within the Phantom Menace, but the world is getting a little sick of it, right? We're all getting a little bit tired. And it's not just the sequel itis, although that is certainly a part of it, I believe. Um, I just think that it has a lot to do with the fact that Disney isn't giving us a whole lot of options. Um, Disney still does what Disney does. And so while Disney is performing well now, if every other movie we have to look forward to is just Disney, we're going to get a little sick of it. Yes, we're in a slump, um, and Disney may be doing the best numbers right now, but Disney is going to get to a point where if there's no other competition out there, then of course it's going to do badly. Of course it's not going to do well, because you can't always just consume one product. You get sick of it. It's like eating the same food over and over and over again. Sure, it's great at first, but then you get to a point where I, I'm a little worn out on this. I'm a little sick of it. I don't want to do it anymore. So I think we're going we're gonna to see us start to climb uh, not to mention that Disney really overestimates its ability to do things, right? Like, Disney's like, oh, we're Disney. We can do whatever we want. We're going to throw whatever we'd like to out there. But I don't think that that's going to end up being a good long-term game for them. Um, you, you're not you're not really doing yourself any favors by over-projecting how well you're going to do all the time. Have a little modesty. Be a little more careful with what it is that you're doing. Remember that people do have choices. And even if that choice winds up just being oh, I'm not going to go to the theater. I'm just going to stay at home, sit on my comfy couch and watch some Netflix. That's still an option for us. We don't have to go to the theater, Disney. We don't have to see your stuff. So give us good stuff or don't give us anything at all. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And hey, feel free to follow me over on Twitter. See you guys around.